Hi, welcome to this talk, Discovering Alarm Correlation Rules for Network Fault Management. My name is uh, Professor Philip fournier Vijay from the Harbin Institute of Technology in Shenzhen, China. And uh, this is a project in collaboration with Huawei. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I will give you first a brief introduction. This project is about the telecommunication networks, like for the cell phones and so on. And they are a key part of today's society. But one important task for the telecommunication network is fault management, because we want the network to continue to always work as usual. Okay. So fault management consists of detecting diagnosing, isolating, and fixing all kinds of network problems. So to do this task, the network operators will uh, receive some alarms generated by the network devices. Okay, There will be millions of alarms in the network. Some of them are important, some of them are not really important. So our goal in this work is to develop some algorithm to find the interesting correlations between the alarms in the alarm logs from the telecommunication network. So why we want to do this? It is because if we understand the relationship between the alarms, then we can reduce the number of alarms that will be presented to the network maintenance worker. So we cannot deal with millions of alarms, but if we find the, some alarm probably caused by some other alarm, then maybe we don't need to fix all the alarms. We can focus on the most important ones. Okay, so here I have uh, the topology of some uh, real-life telecommunication network. It is a, a simplification, of course. Okay, so. The topology of a real-life telecommunication network looks a little bit like a tree, but it is a graph because there can be also some uh, rings in the topology. Okay, And there can be thousands of devices of different types and more than 300 different types of alarm. And some of these alarms can propagate on the network. And there they, they can be so many alarms, too many alarms. So how can we deal with this? So we want to find what are the redundant alarms. That means we want to understand the relationship between alarms to be able to prioritize the most important alarms or fault that we should isolate or fix. Okay. So there are two main types of approach to do this in the literature, the pattern mining based approach and the machine learning based approach. In this talk, I will focus on the pattern mining based approach because uh, machine learning sometimes is more like a black box. With the pattern mining approach, we'll have more a glass box approach where we try to understand the relationship between alarms and it will be interpretable by humans. Okay, so this is why we choose this approach. Okay, so many studies about this for pattern mining for fault management, most of them, they think about the alarms as a sequence. Here I have a sequence, alarm AC, followed by A, followed by AB, followed by C, and so on. So we have the time with the alarms. And then from this, they will find some patterns like AB, always followed by alarm C, for example. Then maybe this can be used to reduce the number of alarms. So there has been many papers about this. I will not talk about all of them because we don't have so much time. But the key advantage of this approach is these patterns are understandable by humans, but one limitation is that most of them, they think about the alarms as a sequence, but they ignore the topology of the network. 
So they completely ignore the, the relationship, the graph that connect the device together, the topology of the network. Okay. So in this project, we consider two aspects to find the relationship between alarms. First, the time. We consider that some alarm might be redundant if they occur in relatively short time. And also, we want to consider the topology of the network. So the alarms should probably occur in some devices of the network that are connected together. So we model the alarm data logs, the logs of alarms from a network as a dynamic attributed graph, as you can see on the right. So the vertices are the devices, like device one, two, three. And we have some attributes for each uh, node in the graph, the device like alarm one, alarm two and three and so on. And we know that these devices are connected. Okay. So we say that this is an attributed graph because it is a graph with some attributes, the alarms, and it is dynamic be because the alarms will come and goes over time. Okay. So we want to find the spatial temporal relationship between the alarms in this data. So here I show you a picture of the overall solution that we have designed. So on the left, we have the alarm data. We have the topology of the network. Then we build a dynamic attributed graph from this. And based on this, we do the alarm correlation analysis to find some patterns or rules that will connect the alarm together. And based on this, we can analyze the real-time alarm flow to remove the redundant alarms. Okay. So now I will go into details about this. The first step is to pre-process the alarm log. We have an alarm log like this. We have some alarm. We know the device, the source. We know the time that it appeared and it was cleared. And also we know the domain of the network. Okay. So one thing is important about this data is that the time is noisy. We cannot be exactly sure about the timestamp because of the different clocks of different device. So what we do, we do some preprocessing. We remove some alarms based on the comments of expert. Some repeating alarms, we combine them if they are appear in a short time. And some alarms with very short duration are ignored. And we also remove the alarms that have the incomplete data. So this is the preprocessing. After that, if we don't have the topology of the network, we can recover the topology from the messages that have been exchanged on the network. So we have the information flow between the devices and we can recover the topology. So in this uh, study, we have a graph with 41,000 vertices. So that means a lot, a lot of network devices. Now the step number three, after we have the topology, we uh, map the alarms to this topology to get the dynamic attributed graph. As you can see, it will look a little bit like a tree. And we have the, the alarms and the timestamp for each alarm for each device. Okay. Now, after this, from this, we want to find some rules of the, this form, A imply B. So the rule between two alarms, A and B. So that means if the alarm A appears, it will be likely followed by alarm B. Okay, so we, we are never 100% sure about this, but we want to find the strong rules that there will be a strong correlation between alarms A and B. So to find the rules in association rule mining, in data mining, they have different measure to find the good rules, like the support. It means how many times A and B appear together. 
the confidence. How many time A and B appear together divided by the number of time that A appear? Or the lift. A and B, how many times they appear together divided by number of time of A and number of time of B. But there are some problems with this measure. The first one for the support, it just look how many times the, the A and B appear together but it does not measure how correlated they are. Maybe A and B just appear together by chance or because A always appear, for example. So the support is not a so good measure. The confidence, one problem about this measure, it does not uh, measure the number of times that B appear, only A, B and A, okay. So this is some problem. And for the lift, one problem is that the measure is symmetric. That means the rule A imply B and B imply A will always have the same lift. But in our project, we want a correlation measure that will be asymmetric. We want to know A imply B and B imply A. We don't want to have the same value. We want to measure the the how uh, likely B will appear after A or A after B is not the same thing. Okay. So to solve this problem, we design a measure called ACOR, Alarm Correlation uh, uh, Rule Measure. Okay. So it is defined as you can see on the right. Okay, by this formula, it is asymmetric from 0 to 1. 1 means a high correlation, 0 or low correlation. And it will consider, it will reduce the influence of noise because we consider the number of time we have A and the number of time for B also. And it is not very strict about the order of A and B. So because we have the noisy timestamp, we will consider that A and B appear together if they appear in the same time window, about five minutes, based on the, the recommendation of experts. So now let me show you a little bit some example how to calculate this measure. So here I have a few examples. I have A and B. I, uh, the alarms A and B appear for some nodes that are connected. And A appear 100 times, B 100 times. A and alarm C appear together 100 times, B and C together 80 times, and C appear 1000 times. So we can do the calculation, but what you will find is that, for example, B to C will give 0 0.4, and C to B will give 0 0.06. So the rule B implies C has a much higher correlation then C imply B, okay. So it is not symmetric. This is something we wanted to have for this project. Okay, so we will extract the rule using this measure. We will extract three types of rules. The rules for between the alarms of a single device or cross device between the device of the same domain or cross-domain rules, that means between devices of different domains. So for the two uh, cross-device and cross-domain rules, these two types of rules, we use the topology. So these rules we cannot find with the previous work on pattern mining, okay, for alarms. Okay, so this is the algorithm about how to, to calculate the correlation. I will skip this part. And then after we find the, the alarm correlation rules, we will use them to reduce the number of alarms, okay, to compress the alarms. We call this compression. So instead of finding all the rules, there will be too many, what we do is to find the top k rules, like the top 100 or the top 500 rules, where k is a parameter set by the user. 
and then we can filter the alarms in real time so we can ignore some alarms based on the rule and the other alarms will be reported to the technician okay to fix them so we did some experiment with the real data from a large-scale uh, telecommunication network so to evaluate the rule quality we compare with some rules found by the ABD system uh, why we do this because these rules have been validated by the domain experts so we know they are the true rules so we want to we use some measure called the coverage to calculate uh, how many rules from ABD we can also find using our approach okay so we want to evaluate this and other things also so first one question how to choose the K parameter to find the top K rules so we draw a chart where we have the correlation values and the number of rules and we use the elbow method to find that at some point the correlation will increase a lot so we say that this correlation we should only use the rule that have at least this correlation other maybe they are the noise because there are so many so we set the correlation here to 0 135 and we have 500 rules in and 113 of them are those found by ABD which confirm they are good rules so we calculate also the compression rate how many alarms we can remove so you can see some numbers here we have the number of alarms at the beginning 6 million if we keep only those on the topology we do the preprocessing we use the cross domain cross device rules and so on we have only about uh, we have the compression rate of 87% so compared to ABD for the cross domain we can improve by 180 percent and for the single domain by 112 percent so this is quite a good result compared to ABD uh, also with beside the rules found by ABD we also find some new rules that were not found by ABD some of them have been confirmed by the domain expert we have shown them to network operators who have confirmed that they are the good rules so we don't show exactly the the rules by themselves because it is an industrial project and uh, we, we cannot really show the, the the rules exactly okay so we propose a method to analyze the alarm correlation uh, for the fault management in the telecommunication network we model the data as dynamic attributed graph and compared to previous work we use the topology while the previous paper only considered the alarms as a sequence without topology and we achieve some high alarm compression rate so that's all for my talk thank you for listening if you have some question we can discuss or you can contact with us. Thank you very much.